Curtis Blades understands all too well that the path from calling out an opponent to actually stepping into the octagon with them in the UFC is never straightforward. Despite his knockout victory over Jailton Almeida and subsequent callout of Tom Aspinall, Blades remains cautious about the possibility of a rematch. Reflecting on his past experiences, Blades acknowledges that his UFC journey has been marked by missed opportunities and delays in title contention. With the heavyweight division's title picture often mired in standstills and complications, he has learned not to count his chickens before they hatch. While a rematch with Aspinall seems logical given their history, Blades remains guarded, recognizing that other factors can influence matchmaking decisions in the UFC. From unexpected title shots to the potential involvement of high-profile fighters like Brock Lesnar, he understands that anything can happen. Despite his skepticism, he hopes for the best and prepares for all eventualities. Whether it's a rematch with Aspinall or a different opponent altogether, Blades is focused on being ready for whatever opportunity comes his way. Regarding the venue for a potential rematch, Blades is unfazed by the prospect of returning to England where the first encounter with Aspinall took place. He brushes off concerns about the venue's atmosphere, emphasizing that once inside the octagon, external factors like booze have little impact on his performance. Armin Zarukyan's recent victory over Charles Oliveira at UFC 300 has put him in contention for a shot at the UFC lightweight champion, Islam Makachev. However, Zarukyan's decision to reject a short-notice fight against Makachev has stirred up some controversy. Following UFC 300, Zarukyan was offered a fight against Makachev for June but declined due to the short notice. Consequently, the title shot went to Dustin Poirier instead. In response to Zarukyan's rejection, Makachev alleged that Zarukyan had turned down fights against him on four separate occasions. Zarukyan swiftly addressed Makachev's comments, denying the allegations and accusing the champion of seeking an extra advantage by fighting on short notice. He challenged Makachev by questioning when was the last time he fought twice in six weeks. Despite the setback in securing an immediate title shot, Zarukyan and Makachev seemed destined for a rematch. Their first encounter in April 2019 saw Makachev emerge victorious via unanimous decision, but Zarukyan showcased his potential against the future champion. Now, with UFC gold potentially on the line, a rematch between the two lightweights appears inevitable. Amanda Rebus found herself in an unexpected and unsettling situation ahead of her last fight at UFC Vegas 89. Upon arriving in Las Vegas, she encountered persistent attempts from an alleged stalker who had developed an infatuation with her since their initial meeting during UFC 251 fight week. The encounters escalated as the individual, claiming to be enamored with Rebus since 2020, persisted in his pursuit of her attention. Despite UFC security measures, the stalker managed to infiltrate the UFC Performance Institute, further alarming Rebus and prompting heightened security measures from the organization. Although Rebus ultimately fell short in her fight against former strawweight champion Rose Namajunas, she maintains a positive outlook on the bizarre ordeal. With her characteristic humor and resilience, Rebus reflects on the experience, joking about the unexpected relationship that unfolded and expressing gratitude that the situation did not pose significant danger. Amanda said this. The other day, this citizen managed to get into the Performance Institute. I don't know how, and he was telling people that I was his wife. My manager Alex Davis found out about it first, then he told me. Then he notified the UFC and they left a security guard with me 24 hours a day to be even more protected. It seems that they found out that he is a fighter, and he couldn't fight in an event because he had taken a sword. To finish this week that I started single, I went dating, I got engaged and married, separated too. Because they researched and saw that he had posted on his social networks that he is traveling to another city, that we were separated, but that he wished me all the luck in the world. It was the most unexpected relationship I've ever had.
As Rebus navigates the highs and lows of her MMA career, she remains focused on her journey in the sport, undeterred by unexpected challenges along the way. With her infectious positivity and unwavering determination, Rebus continues to inspire fans with her resilience both inside and outside the octagon. Montana De La Rosa and Andrea Lee are set to face each other once again inside the UFC cage, five years after their first encounter. Scheduled for a UFC Fight Night event on June 8, the flyweight bout will feature a rematch between the two fighters. Their initial meeting took place in October 2019 in Greenville, South Carolina, where Lee secured a unanimous decision victory over De La Rosa. Since then, both fighters have faced struggles in their respective careers. De La Rosa has accumulated a record of 2-4-1, while Lee has gone 2-7 in her last nine fights. With both fighters looking to snap their losing streaks, this rematch presents an opportunity for redemption and a chance to get back on track in the competitive flyweight division. Mike Perry is gearing up to headline Knuckle Mania 4 in a highly anticipated showdown against Thiago Alves, scheduled for Saturday. Stepping into the ring at 185 pounds, Perry is poised to deliver an electrifying performance, aiming to steal the show and leave a lasting impression on fans. Expressing his excitement about headlining the event, Perry acknowledged the caliber of the fights leading up to his bout and emphasized his determination to elevate the energy even further. Confident in his abilities, Perry is ready to rise to the occasion and deliver a memorable performance that will have everyone talking long after the event concludes. Despite being a significant favorite at minus 500 against Alves, Perry recognizes the challenge posed by his opponent, whom he considers the toughest he has faced in Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Alves, a former BKFC champion, brings considerable experience and skill to the table, making the matchup highly anticipated. Perry's confidence stems from his undefeated 4-0 record in BKFC and his recent TKO victory over Eddie Alvarez. With each fight, Perry has continued to elevate his game, facing tougher opponents and showcasing his relentless drive to succeed in the ring. As he prepares to step into the ring for Knuckle Mania 4, Perry is focused on delivering another dominant performance and solidifying his status as one of BKFC's top competitors. Anthony Smith recently shared insights from his sparring sessions with Sean Strickland, who is gearing up for a bout against Paulo Costa at UFC 302. Strickland's last fight was a title loss to Dreykus Duplessis at UFC 297, while Costa aims to rebound from a defeat against Robert Whittaker at UFC 298. Smith himself is preparing for a match against Vitor Petrino at UFC 301, having last fought Khalil Roundtree Jr. at UFC Fight Night 233, where he faced a third-round TKO defeat. In a discussion on MMA fighting on SBN, Smith praised Strickland's skills, noting that he possesses a more extensive array of offensive techniques than what he typically displays in fights. Smith remarked, that dude's good, he's really good. I don't want to pull the curtain too far back on training, but it there was a part of me that was shocked at how good he was because he only shows a small part of his game when he fights. He has a much bigger, like, way more diverse technical game than he shows. The first thing I said to him after the round, like, why don't you do this when you fight? Additionally, Smith highlighted Strickland's ability to maintain pressure throughout their sparring sessions, noting that Strickland controlled him for three consecutive rounds. Joe Rogan recently shared his thoughts on Jamahal Hill's comments following his loss to Alex Pereira at UFC 300. Hill expressed frustration with referee Herb Dean's handling of a low blow incident during the fight, which led to Hill being caught off guard and knocked out. 
Rogan, speaking on his podcast alongside Max Holloway, empathized with Hill's perspective. While acknowledging that there are different viewpoints to consider, Rogan understood Hill's frustration. During the discussion, Rogan analyzed the sequence of events, noting Hill's reaction to the low blow and subsequent interaction with Pereira and the referee. He highlighted that Pereira continued to advance despite the pause in action, suggesting that Hill's relaxation after the low blow may have inadvertently allowed Pereira to close the distance and land the decisive strike. Rogan emphasized that while Hill's point is not perfect and fighters are expected to protect themselves at all times, there was indeed a moment of confusion during the fight. He concluded that Hill's perspective deserves consideration and that the situation was a real moment of uncertainty. Rogan said this. Let's make the argument and see what happens. Watch Jamahal, see after the groin strike his legs lock up and he relaxes. He gives a thumbs up, we cool, and he touches Herb so now they're back at it. Pereira has never relaxed. The fight had restarted, but would that position have taken place, had it not been for Jamahal relaxing and giving him the thumbs up? There is a weird millisecond where nobody knows what's going on. But Pereira is still moving forward. When Jamahal lands the kick and look at the distance, Pereira closes. He closed the distance. They pause, Jamahal gives him the thumbs up, but Pereira's closed the gap now. He's closed the gap a lot more than Jamahal would have let him. It's a mistake by Jamahal, protect yourself at all times. But also, it does seem like there's a moment of confusion. Once he does that little hop in, he takes the moment to close the gap. So he doesn't stop when Herb stops him, he closes the gap. This is a real moment, and I'm not making any excuses for Jamahal. He can take a loss as good as anybody. But he's got a point here. Overall, Rogan's comments suggest that he understands Hill's frustration and acknowledges the complexity of the situation, although he stops short of making excuses for the outcome of the fight.